Timing is everything. We've all heard that before, right? And if you're trying to get a design to sign off, it's particularly true. You're fighting time on two fronts. You've got a big old schedule to hit, and those tiny little pesky clock cycles just never seem to have enough time for all your logic to finish. Unfortunately, we've also heard Tempus Fugit. Time flies. What do you do when your sign-off deadline is looming, your slack is negative, and your timing analysis tools are running for day after day after day? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Timing analysis for sign-off is a huge challenge in today's complex designs. Today I'm talking with Ruben Molina of Cadence Design Systems about Tempus, Cadence's new super-fast sign-off timing solution. Before we get started, I want to remind everyone that you can click on that Download Now button below your player. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Hi Ruben, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi Amelia, it's nice to be here. So a lot of engineers I know break out in a cold sweat when they think about time enclosure. But Ruben, let's step back here a second and talk about the needs surrounding time enclosure. Okay, well, starting at the older technology node, the sign-off closure problem really wasn't a big issue because in terms of the number of timing views that needed to be analyzed, maybe one or two, and design sizes weren't that big, so there weren't a lot of modes to analyze. Sure. And the design sizes were pretty small as well. Mm -hmm. So when you got to timing sign-off, pretty much it was one or two analyses, and then you were pretty much done. But now we're moving to 20 nanometer, and design sizes are a lot larger. Sure. Run times are taking hours, if not days. Yeah. The overall sign-off closure phase is now pushing about 40% of the overall design cycle, and that's actually becoming the biggest bottleneck in trying to tape out a design. So mm -hmm. it's, it's becoming a big problem. And the industry really is needing solutions in that space to sort of shrink that sign-off closure phase. Sure. So, Ruben, we've been talking about timing analysis tools for quite some time now. Are we solving a problem here that's already been solved? Not really, because the timing sign-off tools really haven't been keeping pace with this sort of increasing design complexity and run times. We've really seen the number of timing views that are required to sign off a chip explode. It's almost exponential. Wow. Whereas, as I was mentioning earlier, with the older nodes, we were seeing just a couple of timing views. Now we're seeing literally hundreds of timing views mm -hmm. that need to be analyzed. And what makes it worse is at the lower process nodes, we also have increased variability, which mm -hmm. means that uh, designers are adding more margin to their designs, and that makes timing closure even more difficult. So right. you've got the problem with trying to close timing on a very complex design, and then trying to analyze all the views and optimize at the same time. It's really a problem that we really haven't been keeping up with, mm -hmm. and the industry is really begging for a solution to help them. Yeah. So I'll bet Cadence has a new solution in this space, or we wouldn't be sitting here with these microphones and stuff. <laughs> of course. Yes, exactly. So we recently announced a tool called Tempus. Okay. Tempus means time in Latin. Okay. And really, Tempus is focused on three areas. The first is performance, and that's really where the innovation is within Tempus. Okay. It's a massively parallelized computation, which means that we can run timing analysis across many servers and CPUs. And we've also done some optimization of our data structures, which allows us to increase our capacity. We literally can do design sizes now in the hundreds of millions of cells. Wow, okay. So that's usually the shiny thing that everybody attracts to is the performance. But okay. a sign-off tool is not really a sign-off tool unless it's accurate. Yes. And we've actually approached the accuracy problem in two ways. One is to reduce pessimism through more usage of path-based analysis. Mm -hmm. And the second one is through advanced process modeling. And we've actually demonstrated that to some of the foundries. And we have received certification with TSMC. Very nice. Now, when you take performance and accuracy and you combine that with optimization, now you've really got a solution that really addresses this whole sort of sign-off closure problem. The problem I was talking about earlier where it was increasing up to 40% of the overall design cycle. Yeah. So our closure capabilities are physically aware. When you add that with the performance and the accuracy, you really have a complete solution. Okay, so 
10x performance, Ruben. Uh, that's a pretty tall claim here. Yeah, it seems almost unrealistic, but yeah. we actually have several components to that, which in aggregate really combine to give us 10x performance. Okay. So the first one is really about improving what we call flat single view multi-threading. Okay. So we've made some significant improvements there where we've actually been able to scale with the number of increasing CPUs. Okay. We're seeing about a 2x improvement there relative to where we were before. Okay. And now when you couple that with distributed processing, which allows us to really analyze a design across many, many compute servers mm -hmm. where each server is actually multi-threaded, now you see an even more improved performance. With just those two alone, we're seeing about 10x performance improvement over what exists on the market today. Okay. We also have some additional features in terms of incremental analysis that allows us to basically take block level partition and time it in the context of the chip without the overhead of a full flat analysis. Okay. But those are really the primary things that get us to 10x performance improvement. All right. And you also mentioned two ways to address accuracy, and one of those ways was reducing pessimism. I personally think that's a great idea. I want my time in glass half full, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about the path-based analysis, which is this area where we try to reduce pessimism, is people ask me all the time, you know, my designs aren't 100 million cells, yeah. so it's Tempest for me. And I tell them, of course it is, because path-based analysis and pessimism reduction is something that any designer would love to have. Even if you're not a designer, as you said, you would like less pessimism. Yes. But all joking aside, even a small design has many, many paths that need to be analyzed. Mm -hmm. And the problem with path-based analysis today is that it has a high compute cost, and so people don't really use it that much in their mainstream flows. Ah. So what we've done is we've parallelized path-based analysis to the point now where we could literally run millions of paths per hour, which is in order of magnitude above what current solutions provide. Mm -hmm. And this will allow designers to utilize path-based analysis across a broader portion of their designs. And that means reduced pessimism, reduced area, reduced power. Great. So, Ruben, I also heard that TSMC certified your tool for accuracy at 20 nanometers. Uh, tell me more about that. What about that improving accuracy part? Yeah, that's right. So. TSMC is one of the largest foundries in the world, yeah. and they have very rigorous certification criteria for mm -hmm. sign-off tools. At the 20 nanometer node, they realize that they really have to make sure that the tools that they're using and that they may be recommending to their customers have all of the capabilities to make sure that the design is going to work once it's taped out. Gotcha. They took a hard look at Tempest. They certified it for delay calculation and noise glitch, and we passed. And what this really means to the customers is that they can utilize Tempest with TSMC as their foundry, knowing that it's past TSMC's rigorous standards. Very good. You also talked about the timing closure element of Tempest. Why did you guys focus on that part? Well, we focused on that because time to tape out is really more than just pure tool runtime. Yeah. The sign-off closure phase is really, today, is more of a point tool solution where you've got your place and route tools. Mm -hmm. You come out of your place and route tools, you perform parasitic extraction. Yep. Then you run many, many timing views and analysis. And typically, users today have a manual ECO flow where they kind of look at across all the timing views and they have their own custom scripts to generate the timing fixes. And they kind of do that without any sort of perception of the placement of the design. Mm. And the problem with that is when they insert cells, they leave it to the place and route tool to figure out where best to put the cell. And sometimes yeah. that place and route tool will move other cells out of the way. Yeah. And the problem with that is it creates new violations. Mm -hmm. So what the industry really needs is these sign-off closure methodologies to be physically aware. Ah. Okay, Ruben, but how do you make it better? Okay. In Tempest, we have a physically aware solution where Tempest reads the physical information of the layout. Mm -hmm. We then perform static timing analysis across all the timing views, and all of this information is fed back to our optimization engine. And the optimization engine knows exactly where all the cells are placed in the layout. Mm. So when we decide to insert a cell mm -hmm. or to add a cell to the net list, we know exactly where that cell can be placed without perturbing the placement of other cells. Very and nice. so really that makes the result very predictable. And we almost guarantee that we're not going to introduce new violations into the design. So we really reduce the number of iterations through this ECL loop. And that's really the key here in shrinking the overall sign-off closure. Sure. So, Ruben, this has been quite a bit 
to cover today. Let's wrap it up a bit. All right. Well, I'll try to be fast, just like Tempest is. <laughs> um, but the things to remember about Tempest is we're really bringing new performance levels in order of magnitude beyond what they were today. We have several performance components that, in aggregate, give us that performance, multi-threading, distribution, and some innovative incremental analysis capabilities as well. Mm -hmm. And we also have the path-based analysis, which, again, the path-based analysis is really going to be a very powerful tool for designers of any design size and complexity. And when you couple those two things together with our optimization engine, you have a total solution which shrinks that 40% sign off closure phase down to a reasonable amount and hopefully eliminates that as the bottleneck in design cycles. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ruben. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Pleasure's all mine. And before we go, don't forget to click that download now button below the player to download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talk, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, Check out the on-demand section of eejournal.com.